Last time in the tent. Bread week. <gasps> you know, Paul's going to be pretty critical. This is what he's known for. The baking is, is wrong. The bakers kneaded their way through the infamous bread week. Bake, bake. But Paul's tough judging. I think this one's a bit sickly. Didn't stop Amanda from winning her first star baker title. Well done. Yay. But sadly, it was Chris's time to leave the tent. You did well, but bread's not your thing, is it? <laughs> Now all that's remaining bakers and the final... I'm starting to get worried. ...are three more bakes. <laughs> I'm smiling. to the top five finalists. That's right, they're gonna thrill us with their signature, slam dunk the technical, and dance their way into the end zone with their showstoppers. Let's kick a home run. <laughs> That's not a thing. Let's get down to action. It's the, the semifinals. semifinals. Why do these shoulder pads have to be so, oh, Emma. that is your shoulders. Emma, the mics are still hot, wow. okay? I'm a semifinalist. It was an honor to get Star Baker last week, but this week it's a clean slate. I just hope everything goes according to plan for my bakes, but things go sideways in that tent. I'm very happy about being a semifinalist. Like I want to do a touchdown dance. <laughs> I want to be number one, but not all the way there yet. When I get there, maybe I can do the real. You are now just three bakes away from a spot in the finals. The semi-finals will end with a double elimination. And in today's signature challenge, the judges would like to see six individual pot de creme. And each has to have a cooked or baked decorative element. You have two hours to finish. On your marks. Get set, bake. I'm feeling nervous. I mean, we're the five surreal. <laughs> A pot creme is a baked custard made with a combination of eggs, heavy cream and milk with a whisper of sugar and any kind of wonderful flavoring that you want to put in it. It's a silky, delicate custard that when you put your spoon in, it sighs. The pressure's on today. It's the semifinal, so I need to keep in mind the aesthetic of it. Pot de creme is all about getting that custard exactly baked. If they overcook it, it'll be too dry and it'll be too solid. If they undercook it, it'll just run away like water. The baked elements, they must be perfect and complement the custard itself. I'm approaching this, just don't mess it up. <laughs> My great aunt, she used to make a lot of butterscotch. I learned to love it as a kid. All of my friends used to say, that's old lady candy. I love butterscotch. <laughs> Destiny is using muscovado sugar to create her beloved butterscotch custard. It will be served in a teacup and topped with a tasty twill cookie. Good morning, Destiny. Good morning. That doesn't smell like just any old regular sugar. That smells no, like brown sugar. No, it's a really dark um, brown sugar. I like strong flavors. So how do you feel with the fact that it could go through to the final oh. subject to you not messing anything up? Goodness, I think I have the ability to get there. Well, good luck, Destiny. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This is sugar and egg yolk and a little bit of zest. I'm going to temper the cream into it in a few minutes. Combining the eggs into the flavored custard mixture is a delicate process. If the bakers whisk the eggs in too slowly, the mixture can split. But if added too quickly, they risk curdling their eggs and will have to start all over again. No scrambled eggs today. We don't want any scrambled eggs in our pot de creme. Today I'll be making it and raspberry pot de creme chocolate. I don't think I've done that yet, right? <laughs> Jeevan's chocolate custard will be topped with a raspberry glaze, a swelled shortbread cookie, and fresh raspberries dusted in gold edible glitter. Putting chocolate in can come out fudgy and muddy. What are you doing to adjust? That's why I decided to introduce the raspberry, because it's a much lighter flavor. OK. So I want to make sure that it's nice and silky smooth. So it needs to be like me, then, silky smooth. 
So this is called a chinois strainer, and its cone shape helps pulls out as possible. Bakers, you have one hour left. With half the time gone, bakers must get their peau de creme in the oven to allow enough time to chill their custards. I'm going to put the mixture into the custard cups and then pour water around it. It kind of gives it a more gentle heating than just the heat of the oven. Peau de creme must be cooked slowly and evenly at a low heat, so using a bain-marie or a hot water bath is crucial. This is one thing you don't want to have browned on top. This is a recipe that is inspired by my Christmas mornings at my grand. She'd be so proud that I made it here. My mom would be so proud. I, I wish they could see me in this tent. It's pretty special. Amanda's peau de creme will feature an orange custard with hints of bay leaf and black peppercorn. It will be topped with an almond twill square and candied orange zest. I'm going for a more subtle flavor. If you want to go through to the final, you can't make any errors. Yeah. Think right. professionalism, that's where you need to be. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I love savory goat cheese with the balsamic, so I think glazed for it. That'll clear your sinuses out, right? It's going to be a real punch, so I hope it's not too much. <laughs> Tina's goat cheese custard will be drizzled with a balsamic fig glaze and topped with a crispy Savayorde cookie. Goat cheese are like cheesecakey flavors. Kind of, yeah, but with a little bit of a tang. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. I know. Oh, I mean, wow. It's very polarizing. This thing is getting in my pores, man. Yeah, that's pretty potent. Whoa! <laughs> I love it, I love that stuff. Yikes! I think ultimately it's going to be interesting flavor-wise what it's going to be like. Good luck. Thank you. It's important the bakers use every minute efficiently. So while their peau de cremes bake... Bake, bake, bake! They must prepare their baked elements. I don't do a lot of shortbread cookies, so it's my decorative element, it's my holiday flair. It's a multi-purpose cookie. <laughs> so this is my twill batter. I've got to rush it, so I am putting it in the freezer. <laughs> well, the biscuit I'm making is kind of like an Italian lady finger. So I do, I do bake these quite often. I'm trying to go above and beyond what was asked for. So I've got maybe three cooked and or baked elements. It's a lot of elements <laughs> in two hours, which is why I look like this. <laughs> Andrea will garnish her white chocolate and orange flavored custard with a mixed fruit topping and a delicate lace cookie. And what's your baking element? I have a very delicate lace cookie, very similar to a Florentine. So you made Florentines in the Technical and Cookie Week and you weren't that successful. So that's very adventurous. Redemption. Redemption. Mm. Mm -hmm. Redemption. Best of luck. Thank you. No one shake over here hasn't set. No sloshing the custard. Don't shake the custards. 30 minutes left. That's half an hour, bakers. You just taking a long time to set. Oh, that looks good. Time is moving so fast. I'm like, there's no way those things are going to set. I up the oven temperature. While most of the bakers fear their custards won't bake quickly enough, Destiny feels confident that hers are ready to go. That's perfect. Angia, how's it going? It's going. They're not ready. They're not ready. They're still jiggling. Oh, still jiggling. So, so this comes out. Oh. I'm just waiting for them to come out because I'm going to have to adjust my oven temperature to put in my cookies. It's just a waiting game now. <sighs> I feel like I'm going to bomb this. <sighs> I can't bake my cookies till this comes out. Oh. You want to get them out while the center is still a little bit wobbly. Eventually, I'll take them out of the water bath so that they cool a little bit faster. <sighs> Yours are out already? Wow. Now I'm just going to do a quick chill. The cookies are in the oven. The pot de are cooling, so all systems go. <sighs> Fingers crossed. OK, that's done, that's done, that's done. 15, 15 minutes. minutes. You all right? Everyone good? Come on, man. Gotta get these cookies in. I could have just stopped at the lace cookie, but I'm not. I'm gonna try to do another element. I'm just stress myself out. I have to watch like a hawk. They will burn. Look good. All right. 
So my lace cookie is done. I think everybody else is starting to get plated up though, and I'm still baking, so I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake. It's okay. Take 10 minutes to bake. 10 minutes left. All right, get these in. It's in. Oh. It's hot. Too hot. Burning my hands, but fun. <laughs> these have chilled down. You can see, no jiggle. I'm trying to be precise. One minute left. Presentation is definitely key here. I think they'll be OK. Ah. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, it's done. Well done. Presentation. Perfect. It looks very celebratory. The cookies on top look great. It's a great, beautiful swirl. The little bit of gold on the raspberries looks fantastic. The chocolate was very, very bitter and heavy, and the raspberry, woo, tart. So they fought with one another. I feel a little bit cheated. Because I love raspberry and I love chocolate, but I, it, the, neither of them arise. The bake on your cookie, wonderful. Thank you. Very elegant. The little piping on the spoon, that little attention to detail is good. I love the shaping of your tweed as well. Thank you. Very nice. Custard's not baked. Massively intense on the butterscotch, but I think it does taste good, however strong it is. I do think they look very pretty, very elegant. The bake on the twills look very good as well. And the custard has a nice shine to it. I think that's really important. I think your flavors are beautiful. Oh, I just think you've overcooked it slightly. It's so close. Well, they look very festive, and you put a lot of work into them. You can see that. I quite like the look of them, the half shape. Although this is yeah. a bit woeful. Is that yeah. supposed to be crispy, then? Yeah. Oh, is it? Absolutely. You see it should sigh? Yes. And instead, it's puddling. OK. It's a shame. You're a couple of minutes away on your lady's finger, and probably about five minutes away on your custard Five more well. minutes, you think? Yeah. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. I think your custard's baked to perfection. Your texture is perfect. The balsamic does bite a bit. I kind of like that. It's not what I would expect from a custard, but at the same time, I don't dislike it at all. So as a package, I think it's very good. Thank you. Yeah, Thank well you. done. Yay. Yay! One more bite. <laughs> wow. That was unexpected. But that was great. I took a risk on this challenge, and it paid off. But that doesn't mean I'm letting up on the gas for the technical and the showstopper. Bigger than I put out right now. But it was big, too. Goodness. Oh, I served the judges soupy pot de creme. I want to be able to show them that I'm worthy of being in the finals, so I need to step it up. It's the semi-finals, and Sherry has a sovereign surprise for today's technical challenge. Now this week, Sherry would like to see you bake something fit for... We'll be making Sherry's princess cake. Princess cake starts with Genoa cake. It's all about the eggs and the air. Good luck. With that, we are going to ask the judges to leave. Thank you, guys. See you in a bit. You have two hours and 15 minutes on your marks. Get set. Break. I don't think I've ever seen, definitely not made one of these before. I have an idea of what it looks like. I've seen it made one before. Crap. So, Sherry, why have you chosen Princess Cake? It's high on the difficulty level. That said, it's the semifinals, and they have to bring these skill sets. Can we go through the elements of what makes a Princess Cake, then? They start with their first layer of cake. They're going to mask it with pastry cream, top it with jam, then creme diplomat. Finish it off with your cake, 
and then whipped cream over the top. And then on top of that, this beautiful green marzipan. It's so delicate and elegant, just like a princess. Absolutely, yes. The first place that they get the genoise. The only natural leavening is from the egg. And then you have the dampening effect from the butter. It will make it heavier. The You've butter's got... gonna make it heavier. Exactly. They may put that out at the beginning. Then they'll have a cake that's this thick. Oh, come on. I think whoever does well in this deserves to go through to the final. Yum, yum. Okay, number one, make a pastry cream, chill. Not very much information. It's the semifinals. This is, this is what it should be. Thank God I know how to make pastry cream. You want to make sure that you cook it nice and thick. My pastry cream needs to be cooled. The next directions are jam, is to make the jam. So I need to measure out 200 grams of raspberries. I have jam sugar here, which is nice because jam sugar has pectin put into it, and that's going to help this thicken up. Ooh, that's hot. OK, so make the genoise sponge. I think that's all we're going to get. Genoise. Genoise. Yes, genoise. How do you feel about the genoise? Genoise. 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 Well, I've certainly made a genoise cake before, so I'm not as worried about that. So I think Sherry meant by the eggs and the air is that to start the cake off, you're going to be whipping up eggs and sugar until it's really light and, and fluffy. I'm sprinkling some good energy I'm over here. sprinkling some vibes over here. I can't do it with my arms. Yeah. I can move my legs. Yeah. In order to get a light Genoise sponge, the bakers must determine precisely when to add their melted butter. With no help from Sherry's recipe, some bakers have added it to their dry ingredients at the beginning. I mixed my flour butter first. Now it's deflated. While other bakers have chosen to add the butter after combining their eggs and dry ingredients. I'm happy with it. Still nice and fluffy. I think I just want to make sure I incorporated all the butter in a little bit more. We're looking good. I'm going to do it for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to check it. Should take about 20 to 25. Hopefully it'll rise. <laughs> We have to make three layers from this, so we're gonna be real careful when you slice it. So my cake is way too flat to be able to get three layers out. I think I'm just gonna have to try to make another one. I don't think it looks how it's supposed to. No, absolutely not. I need to do this over again. Do I have time to do it over again? One hour left. Yeah, let's make it happen. I don't think I forgot any of the ingredients, but I will pay more attention this time. While Jeevan and Andrea whip up their second Genoise sponges, <sighs> get it right. the other bakers move on to their marzipan. It's hard to get the right color here. I don't want it too dark. More like a pistachio color. 30 minutes now, bakers. Time is flying today. I'm flailing. You know, when I'm at home and I'm making my princess cakes, I like to use a little marzipan. Whoa, she's trying to get my secret. Come on. To assemble, cut the sponge horizontally into three layers. Place the bottom layer onto the serving plate and spread with a layer of, add a layer of jam. Spoon over some of the creme diplomat mixture. I'm now repeating what I did on the first layer on the second one. Spoon over the remaining whipped cream and smooth into a dome shape at the top. It's a dome. <laughs> it's a dome. So I kept my first cake because I want to be able to serve something in case I can't get the next one out of the oven fast enough. Still want to be able to put something on a plate. While Jeevan begins assembling using his first sponge, Andrea has waited to see how her second sponge turns out. Oh no, it's pretty bad. Oh, and this guy wasn't even done baking. Oh boy. I think I'm just going to have to move on with my two layers. All right, next. While my cake is chilling, I am going to roll out my marzipan. I want it just a little bit thinner. It's super thick. Five minutes left. I'm not going to get this done. This is not getting done. <laughs> it's looking pretty tiny, but I'm just going to move on and pretend that it's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> I 
can't change it. It is what it is. I never made it before, so I'm pretty proud of it. The bake is over. The judges are looking for three light layers of Gemois sponge, jam and cream, topped with a pastel green marzipan. OK. It needs to have a little... Overall, it's not too bad at all. I'd say the colour of the marzipan isn't happy enough green. Let's have a look inside, shall we? It's cooked through and through, and beautiful caramelised colour on the outside. The cream layers look perfect, and the right amount of raspberry jam. The marzipan tastes OK. Moving on to number two, this is a much lower affair. It looks a little more like a hubcap. <laughs> it does, yeah. Let's see what's going on, really, shall we? There lies the problem. It looks like there's only two layers of sponge. And it's like rubber. In order to make a perfect genoise, what you really need is to get those and foam them up. And do not stir too much. You do not want to deflate this. Big problems here with the marzipan. Oh. It's that rip, though, all the way around. Yeah. And the colour is more yeah. marzipan than it is princess. Ooh. I can feel... <laughs> I feel a problem. Where's the cream? It's more of a jam cake. The genoise is very dense and dry. Once again, all the leavening comes from the foaming of the eggs with the sugar. The marzipan is delicious. So is the jam. Gorgeous piping work on the outside. Great colour as well. Great colour. Nice bit of height. There's a dome. Fork just drops into the sponge. There could be a little more diplomat cream. The top cream layer is spot on. The marzipan is perfect. Love the color of the marzipan. Very bright, very happy green. And the piping is elegant. It looks like on the genoise that they didn't get enough rise in the cake. Another issue is the thickness of the marzipan oh. would have sat on everything and made that very heavy. The marzipan might end up being so thick now, but that has made a difference to the layers. That's interesting on that one. The judges will now rank the bakers from fifth place to first. Number five. Cheevin. So I didn't whip the eggs with the sugar. So you couldn't get the volume? Yeah. OK. Andrea is fourth and Destiny is third. In second spot, we have this one. Tina, all the elements were there. It just needed a little bit more finesse. First, Amanda, your cake was tender and perfectly baked. The cream was luscious overall. Very well done. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm not going to count myself out until after the showstopper's done. So I need to make sure and step it up tomorrow. That was my first technical win. If my boys were in this position, I would tell them, stay focused and do what you know how to do. Bake. They don't know how to bake, though. We're almost done with the semifinals. And after the signature and the technical, who's in danger? I'd have to say Andrea, Destiny, and Jeevan are all in trouble. The showstopper is really where the rubber hits the road here. Both Tina and Amanda, they've got to do better than the bottom three, and then they're in the finals. and welcome back. Now, the semi-final showstopper challenge is the only standing in between you and the finals. We're looking for a winter gingerbread scene. It must be completely edible. You have five hours to complete your scene. On your marks. Get set. Bake. bake. This is a short amount of time for this challenge. Gingerbread doesn't come quickly. <laughs> I usually spread it out, uh, you know, for a whole week. Never done it five hours straight, so this is going to be interesting. The baker should tackle this challenge by keeping it simple to start. Most important is to get the structure. They can take the time to do the little decorative details. When you're making a structure of a gingerbread, it can't have something that's going to be too soft. So there needs to be more sugar lead, which gives you the snap. Butter gives you the softness. The thing is, it has to look and taste incredible, worthy of a semi-final in the tent. 
So in my gingerbread, I'm doing cinnamon, ginger, and cloves. Because the structure needs to be strong enough to stand up, bakers will need to find the right balance of sugar and molasses. They need enough to create a strong snap, but not so much that it will affect the flavor. The dough is a lot different from other doughs because of the molasses. It helps the structure to be really firm. So I've got dark brown sugar here, which has a nice amount of molasses in it. I'm going for a nice snap on mine. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to tell us all about your gingerbread scene? I'm doing a replica of my parents' home. It's where we spend all of our Christmases. Andrea's gingerbread scene will be a stunning recreation of one of her favorite family memories, complete with her ginger husband and ginger kids building a snowman. So I'll have deer, and then I'm going to try to make a toboggan, a snowman, because making snowmen with my children is very important. And I love that you are including your family in yeah. that. That's so sweet. Yeah. It's very personal. Yes, it is. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Thank you. I am doing three complete buildings of gingerbread. I need uh, lots of gingerbread today. <laughs> right now, I need probably about 20 some odd pieces. I need eight of these, four of these, eight of these, four of each of these. So it's going to be a lot of gingerbread. With so many pieces needed to complete their gingerbread scenes, bakers between multiple bakes, making icing and creating decorations. I don't have time to be nervous right now. I just, I gotta keep my head down and just keep, keep baking. Bakers, we are one hour down, four hours left. What? I want a quarter inch thick, so I have my little guides here that are gonna tell me when I've gotten to the right height. Amanda's hoping to cozy up to the judges with her rustic Lake Tahoe log cabin, complete with detailed sugar windows and a ginger turmeric truffle log fire pit. So I use brown sugar and then I add my molasses and lots of good spices. How long does it take to put together? Hopefully less than five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Some bakers are cutting out their gingerbread pieces before they bake, and others are going the extra mile by adding a decorative element before they even bake it. Looks like Amanda's got a really cool rolling pin to stamp out her log cabin, which will go a lot faster than me with my bricks. <laughs> that is one, two, three, four, five. And back to her roots with her winter wonderland at grandma's. Her cinnamon clove gingerbread will be finished with Pipes Royal icing for snow. My mom was in the military, my dad was in the military, so we were at my grandma's house a lot, and it was awkwardly placed between two bell towers. So you're gonna need a lot of dough. Oh yeah. How much flour do you think you're using? 50 cups, maybe. Well, <laughs> Whoa. I've used some of it already. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'd use that in a bakery. <laughs> if you pull this off, it's going to be impressive. Go destiny. Go <laughs> power. Destiny. Thank you so it much. Sounds... I will be making this dough probably three or four more times. We might have some naked animals if I run out of time. <laughs> Exhaustion is setting in. This is stressful. Do, do, do. Merry Christmas. You are halfway done with your bakes. You have two and a half hours left, bakers. All good, bakers? Yes. <sighs> this is not the reaction I was expecting. No. But, uh, you guys have been great. <laughs> Santa. I've never seen this amount of focus. Unbelievable. Was Santa just here? I don't know. I, I, don't I, care. I thought I heard something. I could have sworn it sounded like Santa. I don't have time for Santa. Tina's double-decker gingerbread penthouse will be meticulously decorated with a variety of gingerbread woodland friends and a hand-painted design on top. Essentially, this is a cookie. It's and you a did cookie. <laughs> so well on the cookie challenge. You Let's hope this star baker. I hope so. <laughs> oh, they've kept their shape. With molasses being so dark, baker deciphering whether or not their bakes are done. If their structure is not baked enough, they won't get a snap. And if baked too long, it will lose flavor. That won't bake too long. Still pliable when it's cooling. This is a recipe for disaster right here. So I really only have two of the keep walls for the center ready to go. Got quite a few more to roll out and stamp. It's a little less neat than I would like, but there's still more gingerbread to make. 
Jeevan Cinnamon Clove Ginger will feature a hand-printed brick design and be protected by a fiery dragon. What type of castle? Uh, French chateau or English castle <laughs> or what? Generic gingerbread ca castle. <laughs> right, OK. Be like my family's home, then. Oh, is that right? Is yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone in Britain's got a castle. Absolutely, yeah. Are you confident coming into this? Yeah, I'm going to give it my best. Do your best. One hour left. Time is running out quickly. I feel like I'm starting to fall behind. I have so much more gingerbread to make. <laughs> I'm trying to decorate, um, put everything together. It's hard to decorate after they're put together. Decorating the gingerbread is the fun part and the nervous part. Ah, there we go. Poured sugar for the windows. Beginning stages always look the worst, right? OK. We might only get one bell tower. <laughs> I want to be able to finish. I am trying to glue this. It's very stressful. Ah! Please don't. I'm starting to get worried. I've actually decided to make a few less pieces than I originally planned. Time is running out quickly. I'm just trying to get this assembled now. I still have some tower pieces in the oven. Those are gonna be tricky to get done. I'm gonna use this royal icing to decorate to hold together for the entire thing. You know, the royal icing dries really rock hard, but it takes a while. Like I said, I'm doing parts of it with the caramel, parts with the royal icing. To adhere their structures, bakers can either use caramel or extra thick royal icing. I want it to be as structurally sound as possible. But with too much, bakers run the risk of weakening their icing. Oh. Ah! Walk gently, you're a bear. <laughs> 30 minutes left. I didn't have enough sugar to do my back windows, so there's going to be a few gingerbread kids back there throwing a baseball. They broke out grandma's back windows. <laughs> I'm going to keep it minimal just for lack of time. I really wanted to do stained glass, but it does not look like that's going to happen. I need to get all the little animals on. I'm having trouble getting everything to stay. So yeah, he's moving. Ah. We now have 10 minutes left. What? what are you doing? Nothing. It's too Just needs to not move because it's so not dry. These are not real rocks. These are our chocolate rocks. Are we having fun yet? Five minutes left. Stressed? I've done just about everything I possibly can and a lot of motion, you know, and heart went into this. Just putting some snow on here. Honestly, I am really happy that it's standing up. <laughs> I was really worried about it. I suppose I have only one done. 10, Ten nine, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, six five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Please step away from your gingerbread <laughs> and icing. Andrea, please bring your gingerbread showstopper up to the judges' table. Can you tell us all, please? This is my home for the holidays Christmas gingerbread scene. It represents everything about me and my family at Christmas. Very neat. The icicles, the chimney, the snow on the roof. It's charming. Thank you. It softened slightly on the outside. What temperature did you bake this at? At 350. It feels stale on the mouth, and it should be still quite crispy. But overall, I think you've done a good job, and I like the flavour. Thank you. So this is Winter Wonderland. I uh, was supposed to structurally have another bell tower, but didn't have enough time to build it. Do you suffer from flooding in the house? Absolutely. I can see that with a dip in the flat roof. <laughs> Destiny, you always bring us such bold flavors, and today you brought us molasses. It almost tastes burnt, even though it's cooked properly. And lost are the traditional gingerbread spice, which comes with ginger. This is a castle, complete with dragon. <laughs> With the dripping, it looks very mysterious and very haunting. It's neat enough, but it's, it's not quite finished. It, it, it feels rushed. 
I did the brickwork by hand mostly, oh, yeah. which sank some of my time. I actually planned to do some stained glass windows and sort of lost the time for finishing up. Listen to that. That's a gorgeous snap. That's the snap I've been looking for. It has got a great flavor of ginger in there as well. Okay. I need to try something. <gasps> Cup of tea? Because I'm British, that's a fantastic gingerbread. Thank you. Looks awful, <laughs> but tastes amazing. <laughs> It looks like it would sit in a shop window. I love the attention to detail that you put into this, even going down to coloring the royal icing in brown around the windows so that the light shines through better. The rocks around the outside, are they candy that you They're purchased? They're chocolate, yeah. You bought them? Yes. That's a shame. <laughs> Did he use uh, caramel sugar to the house Watch together? Watch the lights. <laughs> Watch the oh. lights. Structurally, it's very sound. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Lost the flavor of the ginger. And it's a bit thick for me. This bends rather than snaps. I see where you're going with this, to put all the molasses in, to give it the color. Unfortunately, it leaves me wanting ginger. Your design is flawless, but your biscuit is definitely flawed. This is my Wonderland. It's kind of a whimsical depiction of what you might see on any given winter day in my backyard. Brilliant. Very, very clever. I love this painting on the roof. It's all freehand? All freehand, yep. Very clever. Beautiful snap. You know, it's got a real depth of ginger in there, which is beautiful. Tastes delicious, looks amazing. Thank you, Tina. Who do I call to get one of these? Oh, me. <laughs> this is the showstopper, goes home, and who goes to the final? Did these gingerbread scenes make it clear who should stay and who should go? I think it did help, ultimately. I think, obviously, Sherry and I need to discuss stuff and see who goes where. When we look at the three that were down at the bottom, Destiny struggled, I think, with their flavor. Too much molasses in there. I thought Jeevan's, on the other hand, tasted amazing, but there was an issue with the castle. I just thought it was a little bit rough and ready. Andrea's looked amazing, but her cookie was a little bit too soft. They all had good bits and bad bits of their, their showstopper. That must be so hard. For me, whether it's in flavor or in design, it's something that Sherry and I have to sit down seriously and discuss which of the two people are gonna go home after this challenge. Wow. What a journey so far. Three of you are moving on to the finals while two of you will be leaving the tent. The star baker is Tina. The next baker through to the finals is Amanda. The last spot in the finals goes to Andrea. And we are so sorry to see you go, Jeevan and Destin, the tent tonight. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Semi finals is a big thing. Being in the tent has always been a dream of mine. Never thought that I would get here just being in my kitchen at home baking. A lot of people don't get to have that. I'm very grateful for it. Oh, Congratulations, you. guys. It's well deserved. Coming into the competition, I had no idea where I was gonna end up. So to make it even this far, I'm really thankful for that. It's so sad to see Jeevan and Destiny go home. They're both, the problem was is that their execution didn't meet up with their vision. I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm in the finals! Wow! I just love how this competition pushes you to do better than you've ever done before. My boys are going to be so proud that I'm in the finals. 
Star Baker and moving on to the final, that's crazy. <laughs> this whole journey that has brought me here, win, lose, or draw, I mean, this is just a wild ride. <laughs> See you in the final. Yes, thank well you. Well done. We've got three great bakers in the final, and the one that wins is the one that turns up, because any mistakes in the final, that's it. Tonight we crown a champion. What? Um, I, th I thought maybe a little less formal. What? Tonight we crown a champion baker. <gasps> oh! Are you not taking this seriously? Yeah. So. <laughs> Tonight we crown a champion baker. We started with 10 and now we're down to our top three. One of our finalists will go home with the coveted cake plate. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Great, Great American, American Baking, Baking Show, Show Holiday, Holiday Edition. Edition. I knew you could do it, you look so smart. <laughs> Thank you. This holiday season, we welcomed 10 amateur bakers into the tent. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> this is happening. They impressed us with their beautiful holiday bakes. It looks like you could put it in a museum. Which the judges loved. Your filling is perfect. That is a triumph. Most of the time. Unfortunately, it does have a soggy bottom. Now three bakers remain, each with as much of a fighting chance as the other. We're all really good home bakers, and I'm excited to bake with the best. Will it be Cake Week star baker Andrea? It tastes beautiful. I know that I'll wake up tomorrow dreaming about this cake. Bread Week star baker Amanda. Really looks spectacular. You're approved. Or Cookie Week star baker Tina. The flavors and textures, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. The final, it's going to be a nail biter. I think that we are all coming in to the finale on a level playing field. I want to go in that tent today and just bake the three best bakes that I've ever done in my life. I slept great last night. I'm rested. I mean, I practiced, of course, yesterday and the day before. I wouldn't be me if I didn't. Best bake. Best. When I was preparing for this, I was making things from my family's past. And I didn't realize until I got into the tent how much that meant to me. So regardless of what happens, I feel like I've gained a lot from this experience. So here we are. The last baker standing. Only three challenges stand between you and the most important title in amateur baking. It's time for the signature challenge and today the judges are looking for cannoli. They can be filled with any filling of your choice. They must have traditional bubble cannoli shells, and just like music to my ears, they must be fried. You have two hours and a lot of work ahead of you. On your marks. Get set. Bake. bake. I'm just thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to be here with these two ladies. I love making cannoli. This is gonna be fun. The signature challenge in the final is one of my favorites, cannolis. The pastry itself, traditional style of wine in it for a little bit of flavor, but also adds to the bubbles, very small bubbles, and it creates almost a rough puff pastry feel, but it's deep fried, so it's all down to the pastry. Get the pastry rice, and the filling is easy enough. When it comes to filling, I'm a little bit of a traditionalist here. That said, these bakers have surprised us with incredible flavors in the past. I'm excited to see what they do. Over the years, I have adapted my recipe to the way that my family likes it. I like to get my cannolis on Arthur Avenue in Bronx. This is the traditional flavor that they would make. So I'm calling it traditional cannoli siciliano. It's traditional to add a little bit of cinnamon to the shell. This is Marsala wine. It's traditional. Everyone has their own version of what makes a really great cannoli. I stick to traditional flavors. Right now I'm adding Marsala wine to the dry ingredients. This is a cannoli that I created with my boys. Whether taking a traditional approach to the dough or using a recipe of their own, it's critical, perfectly crisp and bubbly. I just want to add enough till this comes together into a nice 
little dough ball. I'm working it in with my fingers because I can actually feel it a little bit better than if I used a pastry blender. It's almost like you would butter into pie crust. Good morning, Tina. Good morning, Good morning Tina. Tina. How are you? Tell us all about your cannolis, what okay. you're doing. My cannoli is a traditional cannoli siciliano. Staying true to the Siciliano recipe, Tina's cannoli will have a chocolate chip and orange cream filling inside a classic chocolate and cinnamon shell finished with pistachios and candied... That, that is classic. classic. Yeah. Sounds okay. delicious. I better get it right. <laughs> While Tina is feeling the pressure, her family back in New York has all the confidence in the world in her. We're so proud of Tina. We know she has so much talent. It's great to see her bringing it to the competition. My mom is such a passionate baker, and honestly, I'm so incredibly excited for her. I can't wait to taste them for the first time. Oh, real? You're yeah. kidding. Yeah. Really? Yeah. First time. Thank, Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. I want to work the gluten up a little bit, make a nice smooth dough. That helps you get that bubble effect that you look. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Andrea. How are you? Good morning. Cannolis. Cannolis. What are you going to do? I'm doing a upstate New York classic cannoli. You from... do know they're from Italy, don't you? I do. Okay, <laughs> they're from Sicily. Um, but not New York. Well, no. So <laughs> obviously the roots are in Italy, but where I'm from in upstate New York, we have a very large population of Italians. Andrea's upstate New York cannoli will feature a chocolate cinnamon shell with a lemon ricotta filling dipped in chocolate chips. Andrea's enthusiasm for baking is something her family is very familiar I think the most exciting time really is like around the holidays. Right guys, you help mom with all the Christmas cookies? Yeah. Cookie! So tell us about your dough. So I have red wine vinegar, flour, cocoa powder, uh, marsala wine, and a little bit of cinnamon in my dough. Wine? Oh, it goes in here. In the dough. Goes in the goes dough. In the dough. So wine? It's yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I like it even more. <laughs> so my dough is ready to be rested for about 15 minutes. Um, and now I can start on my filling. I am making Bianco. I'm totally probably not pronouncing that correctly. And this is going to help thicken up my ricotta um, filling. Oh, it smells so yummy. <sighs> this is my chocolate hazelnut cream. How many I degrees like that. is that? Well, let's see. Oh, well, are you okay? Let's take temperature of the ice bath. Ooh, it's, it's 32. With the filling, I'm trying to make sure that every bite has a little bit of orange peel, a little bit of chocolate. Amanda. Hi. Amanda, good morning. Good morning. Tell us all about your cannoli. So I have never or, or even really even tasted one before. Well, Tahoe isn't exactly the home of the cannoli. So. My boys started to help me. And so when we didn't know what to do next, we would take a hot chocolate break. And those hot chocolate breaks inspired our flavors for the filling. With the help of her family, Amanda is creating a chocolate hazelnut cream cannoli finished with chopped hazelnuts and candied orange peel. You'll have to make a Christmas thing now, making cannoli. Yeah, I think it will have to be a Christmas thing, yeah. <laughs> Cannoli might be a new holiday tradition, but sharing her passion for baking is always year-round. You know, as a father, seeing Amanda bake with her sons is simply one of my favorite moments. Amanda's passing along the recipes and the baking that she did with her grandmother for our three sons, and, and our hope is that they'll be passing along to those of their children as well. Good luck. I'm going to move because my hair's going to start smelling oh. of fat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not okay. good. The pasta roller gives you an even thickness. As they begin to roll out their dough, the bakers must decide on the thickness for their shells. The key is to make it thin. You don't want a thick cannoli shell. A decision that could mean the difference between sweet six failure. So I want this pretty thick, and I found that going to the fifth setting gives me a thickness I like. I'm on the last setting. Thin, very thin. So if I made them too thick, they're going to be chewy. They're not going to be nice and crisp. Just 30 minutes, just 30 minutes. To make your traditional bubble cannoli shells with filling inside of them. <laughs> you all right, Tina? <laughs> We're both doing it, Tina. Yeah, I know. I heard yours go down, too. It doesn't want to stay. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
And there we go again. Oh, for heaven's sakes. We're waiting for to get to about 370 and 375. It's on its way. 15 minutes left. If the oil isn't hot enough, they're going to absorb a lot more oil and get greasy. And if it's too hot, they'll cook on the like, outside but not on the inside before they're they're done. Maintaining that perfect temperature becomes even more difficult when you add cold cannoli dough to the hot oil. I think I'm just gonna do two at a time so that I don't bring the temperature of the oil down too quickly. Even the slightest change in temperature could affect the fry on the cannoli, hindering any chance of creating 12 identical shells. I feel like <sighs> I'm gonna feel better once these guys are fried. Do your thing. Oh, there we go. See, we're getting those little blisters, which is really great. So why, why do they have to have the bubbles on there? It's a tradition. It's traditional. That's what they're supposed to look like. Okay. Go, little cannolis, go. I'm not happy with those two. I need to do more. They seem to be done in the middle, so well, that's important. <laughs> now we gotta cool it down. The temperature fluctuates so much in these things. A minutes. It wouldn't be an Andrea bake if I wasn't down to the wire, because we all know that's what I do. It was not this stressful making them for the boys at home. I want to make sure that the whole thing is full, because I have a feeling the judges are going to cut them right in half and make sure that they're totally filled. I've got my 12, so I'm going to start filling now. I'm happy. My cannolis are looking like cannolis. One minute left. Get your finishing touches in. These are the last two. All right, we're gonna make it snow. Okay. Only cannoli. Five, four, three, two, one. Yay! Your final signature bake has come to an end. Done. Well done, girls. Hi, Andrea. Hi. 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 How do you feel about the challenge? This was a fun one, so I really enjoyed making these. They look pretty much the right size, all uniform. The bubbling is beautiful. Crispy. Thank you, you do have some nice bubbling on there, which is what you look for. It's piped all the way through, which is good. And crispy. I think your flavours are great. The chocolate really works on the end. Uh, the ricotta in the middle is beautiful, silky, it's smooth. It's nice and cooling, which is what a cannoli should be. However, they need to be quite robust cannoli shells or cannolos. I went down to the thinnest setting, so I you probably did. should have. Too much. Yeah. The one up kept with. Okay. The cinnamon is lovely, and you can taste the rogotta, so the balance is great. Thank, Thank you, you, Andrea. Thank you. Right. They look quite robust. I like the little bubbles that I see as well. There's a little bit of change in some of the thicknesses and sizes. Yeah. You can see where you put the cocoa into the dough. It has a nice color. Flavor, superb. Classic Sicilian, however. If you look at the inside, you've wrapped the shell around too much. Yeah. Yeah. So you've doubled up and the inside's raw. Yeah, I should have cut part of that off. Yeah. yeah. Your cream ragotta filling is sublime. It is classically perfect. So I'll just pop the one side off. Okay. <laughs> squeeze it back together. <laughs> and there you go. And now. <laughs> That's a shame. You know what, Paul? As a robust man, I like a robust cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> so close. So close. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Thank Taking you. my half with me. I love the uniformity. They all look like perfect soldiers lined up. There's a little color situation going on. You might have left one or two of them in the fryer longer. But overall, they have a good look. It's quite bready. It is fried all the way through. It's just quite chewy, which is unusual. It seems as though you've developed the gluten, which would make it more bread-like. Gotcha. And less crispy shell. Okay. The flavor's amazing. I think the flavor, you've got spot on, but that shell is not 
Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. up in the air at this point. The last time I made this at home, it was not as thin as that. It had more sturdiness to it, so this was just an error on my part in the finale. I was this close. Pretty much exactly that amount of dough that overlapped. But I think right now we're all very even. We'll see what happens in the technical and the showstopper. All right, final bakers, it's time for the technical bake. And this time, it's Paul's selection. This is your final technical challenge, and it matters. This is all about consistency. You will be making a bomb kuchen. With 20 layers of sponge, topped with a chocolate glaze. To be fair, we're going to ask the judges to leave. Please. <laughs> you have two hours and feel perfect bomb cooking. On your marks. Get set. Bake. Never ever made a cake with 20 layers. This will be a first. I kind of have an idea in my head. I, I've never seen one. I've, I've seen how to make these before. I've just never actually made one. So, Paul, tell us why you picked Baum Cooking for the final technical challenge. The Baum Cooking was a challenge from Germany. If you wanted to become a Konditormeister or a Master Patissier, you had to create a perfect. We're looking for 20 layers in this. The key thing is a light layer and then a darker layer all the way up. The bakers have to produce a batter, but the only rising agent in it is self-raising flour. And so they've got to whisk up the egg whites. Now they need the foam of the egg whites to give it the little bit of So they've got to be careful with this. When it comes to the broiling, how long do they leave it in there for? The darker layer, you obviously leave it in there a little bit longer, and it darkens up. Then you do another light layer. They need to understand how the batter itself reacts with the heat that comes from the top. This is all about patience. It is, yeah. And consistency. Exactly. Oh, my gosh, this is going to be quite the challenge. I mean, it's the final. We have three great bakers in that tent at the moment, and I think any one of them could come up with a little bit of bam kuchen magic. Number one, for the batter, cream, the butter, and sugar together. Oh, I gotta have my game face on today, that's for sure. Add the self-rising flour, almond flour, cinnamon, hazelnut liqueur. This is the hazelnut liqueur. It smells delicious, too. Mm -hmm. oh, is it strong? Does it smell strong? No, it smells good. It smells sweet. Oh, yum. I thought it was apple juice. It smells, no, it smells really good. Ooh, I just felt the chest hit. Has 10 egg whites with not sure how I'm gonna go about that. Paul left out to what point to whisk the egg whites. This is to whisk the egg whites. It doesn't say to like put in a meringue or anything, it's just like whisk it. If the egg whites aren't whisked to the perfect consistency, the layers will not properly rise when baked, resulting in a cake that is too dense. Tina has whisked her egg whites to a stiff peak. Andrea has done a light whisk, and Amanda has whisked hers to a soft medium peak. This could be an absolute failure. They're into the tin and spread thinly. The trick is to portion it out so that you can make 20 layers out of the batter. I'm just kind of weigh this out. So I weighed the batter. I'm going to divide that by 20, and that's how much each layer should be. Horrible math. Horrible math. Each layer needs to have about 46 grams of batter. 43 grams of batter for each one. 153 grams. About a half cup, about a half cup. Bakers, we are. Time really flies. All right, now we're gonna ladle it in. No idea if I'm doing this right. Broil until lightly golden, then add more batter and broil till dark golden. Continue until you have 20 layers, alternating color. So this is one layer, if you can believe it. Really? All right, let's give it a go. He didn't tell you how long to cook it. I'm not timing the layers, I'm just doing them by eye. Time is all relative in here right now. A minute for the light layers, probably double the time. It's almost like cooking, I guess, a millimeter at a time. Lightly golden, then dark golden, then light golden. Light, dark, light, dark. It's a dark layer. Now we're gonna do a light. A light layer. Light, dark, light, dark golden. This is a light layer. The next layer's gotta be darker. My darker layer's going a little darker. 
It's starting to build up. It's layer eight. Let's see, focused. It's layer 13. This is layer 16. I don't think I'm going to have. Well, how many cups do I have? Because I don't think this is right. 50 grams, not 150. Oh, I haven't have enough. We've got 30 minutes left now, bakers. Only 30. Ah! This is uh, my last layer, number 20. Oh, I'm not happy with it. Being a little hard on myself. It's just my nature. Looks pretty good. Oh, wow, I have just enough batter. Holy cow. Make the chocolate glaze and glaze the cake. So the glaze, I'm just going to pour it on. It's really hard to judge, you know, when you don't know what you're making. <sighs> That's not. I don't know. We'll see. 15 minutes left, bakers. Set up a bit. For the candy hazelnuts, skewer the hazelnuts and dip in caramel. So spin the hazelnuts so the caramel drips to form a spike. God, this is scary. You want to get the spike, and then they'll stand up straight when they harden. 10 minutes left. Going right down to the wire. To decorate, place the candied hazelnuts in the center of the cake, interlocking like a wigwam. Wait, Mom. These are my hazelnut spheres. Oh, what was a sphere? Interlocking like a wigwam. I'll make it like a teepee. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm up. <laughs> Last technical. Last one. Last one. Last one. <laughs> Place your bakes in front of your pictures. Sherry and Paul are looking for 20 even layers alternating in colour with an airy light texture finished with a shiny chocolate glaze and elegant caramel covered hazelnuts. Okay. The glaze looks it's shiny, yeah. But the layers have got thinner and thinner and thinner as they got up to the top. Are you going to count? Could be the right number, but they just simply ran out. It came down to nothing. What's it taste like? It's dense. It's very dense. I think they struggled with the mixture, but also the, the consistency of the mixture going into the tin. Moving on to number two, that ganache looks very good. Let's have a look inside. I think they do have the layers. There's a bit of inconsistency in the colour as you get close to the top. There's a bit of a light spot there. Mm -hmm. mm. It's not as dense. OK. Now, moving on to the last one. These shards are so elegant, they're just yeah. bouncing off the top of the cake. Those layers look fairly equal, actually. When you look at it, you see the dark layers. And the cake is very tender. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad at all. We'll count down from three and quickly get to first place. In third position, we have this one. You were spot on that I had too much batter on my bottom layers. It's about being consistent with your mix all the Second. Way. Your layers were a little blonde, but really great effort. So obviously, that leaves number one. Well done, Amanda. Thank you. Nailed it. That's right. Boom. Boom. I am proud to finish first in this last technical. But I don't want to get too excited because I'm still running towards that finish line. Good night, everyone. I think that tomorrow's showstopper is going to make it or break it. It's the final of the great American baking show. How close is this? I think it's neck and neck. For me, the winner, the showstopper, will win <gasps> the whole thing. It's that close. It is that close. At this point, we're splitting hairs. It all comes down to the finest detail. That is crazy. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not a judge. I do love that it's an all-girl final. Girl power. Girl power. Girl power. So it all comes down to the final showstopper to stop the show. For your final challenge, you'll be baking a holiday celebration cake. One with three tiers, a crunch element, at least one filling, and of course, it has to have holiday flair. You have four and a half hours to complete your cake. 
And then our judges will crown the winner of the Great American Baking Show Holiday Edition. <laughs> <laughs> so for the last time, on your marks. Get set. I've never baked a cake under this much pressure before. Ooh, asking a lot of me today. Their holiday celebration cakes should be a showpiece. The main challenge is that their cakes are cohesive. You have two different flavor cakes, you have your filling, and then you have to stack them one on top of each other. There should be color, there should be a theme. I love when it tells a story. This is not a time to be safe. At the end of the day, one of these bakers is going to be the winner of the Great American Baking Show. Making a bake like this in four hours is truly a challenge. There's a huge amount of things that can go wrong, but the thing that will really wind me up, if they're going to do a combination of flavors, they must complement each other and not fight each other. They've got to think this through. But also, something that really represents them. We've seen some fantastic bakes. This has to be the best one. Right now, I'm starting my red velvet cakes. This cake I actually created a few years ago. This has been tweaked over the years, this one. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Perfect timing. Trying to get that cake in the pan. Tell us all about your holiday celebration okay. cake. The bottom layer and the top layer is going to be a dark chocolate espresso mousse, and my crunchy element will be some almond biscotti. Tina's two chocolate espresso tears will be separated by a middle tier of almond sponge, coloured to resemble an Italian flag and filled with an apricot Swiss meringue buttercream. Pushing the Italian side again, my family is a big fan of that rainbow cookie, so I thought I'd try to incorporate that into the cake. How do you feel? I mean, obviously, this is your last challenge. You know, it's really bittersweet. We've had so much fun. I can't believe it. We've blinked and we've gone through 18 bakes already. It's amazing. Well, good. good Thank luck. you. Thank you. I'm going to do one little tap to get out any big air bubbles. These are going to go in at 375 for 30 minutes. Chocolate is in. On to the almond cake. With their first cake batters in the oven, the bakers waste no time starting on their second. This will be my top tier of my cake. This is my vanilla sponge. Hello. Hello. Hello, Andrea. Hello. Hello. Wow, you've come a long way since that first day <laughs> in those know. shaky hands. How are you I, feeling? I feel good. For you, my red velvet and snickerdoodle holiday celebration cake. For her final bake, Andrea's top and bottom tiers will be red velvet. Her middle tier will be a cinnamon sponge filled with a snickerdoodle cookie crunch. I don't, know, I don't know what they are. Oh, snickerdoodles are, are so traditional American. What you know, type of person it, never had a snickerdoodle? British one? A British one. <laughs> wow. Say it. Snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle. Yeah. <laughs> Say it two more times, please. Say snickerdoodle? Uh -huh. Snickerdoodle. <laughs> you are halfway through your final challenge. Well, so I'm checking it's coming out clean, which means there's no wet batter, so this can come out. This one is done. The bakers set aside their first cakes to cool and get their second batter into the oven. Now they can begin working on their fillings. That's like a classic cream cheese filling for my red velvet, and then a, a brown sugar cream cheese filling for my snickerdoodle. I'm trying to cool the chocolate ganache because I want to whip it. I want to whip it. I want to whip it. So right now I'm making my espresso mousse to go in between my chocolate layers. And so I'm dissolving the instant espresso powder in some heavy cream. Hello, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hello. Today I'm making you a Tahoe forest cake. So I'll do two chocolate sponges, and each sponge will be a layer of chocolate ganache with a cherry jam in the center, and then I'll do a whipped cream frosting. In addition to the chocolate cherry tears, Amanda's cake will be top sponge, filled with honeycomb and decorated with chocolate bark. Why does it have to be a forest? I live in the Tahoe forest. You live in the forest? I live in the forest, and the forest is on the edge of a lake. Of a lake. Can I tell you, the lake is as blue as your eyes. Really? Oh it is. my gosh. It is. Wow. You have you wow. have Lake Tahoe blue <laughs> eyes. Now you've heard it all. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> all the cakes are out of the oven. Oh. I can't believe it all, number one. 
And number two, that the first one he tries is gonna be one of mine. I better do it, I better do it right. Right now, I'm making the biscotti for the crunchy element. They asked for a crunchy element. I couldn't think of anything more crunchy than these. This is like the quintessential Italian cookie. And it, and it kind of goes with the espresso, coffee and the biscotti. You can't go wrong with that. We're making honeycomb, people. The honeycomb is gonna add that little crunch flavor. The idea is that when I add this baking soda to the caramel, it's gonna create carbon dioxide and the sugar are going to trap those bubbles. Okay, we're gonna let that cool. One hour left for your final showstopper challenge. With their cakes cooled, the bakers must now carefully cut perfectly uniformed layers for each tier. Okay, so this is gonna help me cut my cakes nice and even. The sponge layers must be perfectly flat in order to properly fill and stack them. So any round or uneven parts have to go. We have cake. Whoa. Don't say I never bring you anything. Who's, who's this? Is this? Sama? It's good, looking good. Just need to cool it off a little bit more. I might eat this whole thing. <laughs> Loves cake. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> oh, so you're using two stations. Well, this is my cooling station. Our cooling station. Now we go back over here. Well, this is quite good exercise. We could just yeah, keep doing yeah. this, and then we exactly. can eat more cake. Exactly. Because we're doing exercises. Here, here, run to oh. the garbage. OK. Thanks. This is garbage, right, OK. There you go. Oh, what is that? Whoa, what is that? That's honeycomb. I love honeycomb. I am going to get the recipe off you. And someone Sugar, can make syrup. it for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thirty minutes left, bakers. That's just half an hour left. Now the fun starts. In order to ensure height stick worthy of the finale, the bakers must strategically layer, fill, and dowel the three tiers. Never baked under this much pressure before. Now is the last time for their creativity to shine as the bakers make a final push to complete the exterior detail for their holiday celebration cakes. I'm piping some red and green rosettes all around the cake. I'm doing like a little forest decoration. They're gonna be my Tahoe tree. I have 10 minutes left now, 10 minutes left. I'm going to try to do some poinsettias on my cake. Ah, come on, guys. I'll never look at a pine cone the same way if this is the reason why I don't finish. One minute left for your final showstopper. <sighs> Andrea, you all right over there? Your hand looks steady. Trying to get it done. Looks steady. <laughs> Ten, Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, seven six, six, five. five. Four, three, two, one. Time is up. Time's up. You guys, your cakes are gorgeous. We did it. <sighs> Andrea, please bring your holiday celebration cake to the judging table. I quite like the colors. Very artistic. And actually, your piping is quite abstract. Yeah, very simple and elegant. Thank you. Well, let's start with the red velvet, shall we? The cream cheese center has this wonderful tang that really sets off the, the cake. It's a perfect balance. Now, this is the snickerdoodle. snickerdoodle yes. The crumb is really beautiful. How straight they are. Perfect. Thank you. Have a taste. I think it's a nice cake. It is a very good cake. For tooth. A kid would love that. <laughs> <laughs> or baby spice. <laughs> Bravo. Well done. Thank you. Tina, please bring your final showstopper up to the judging table. It's a very 
very busy cake, isn't it? Yes. While there's a lot going on, you're piping. It's very well done. It looks good. But what's it taste like? Beautiful, perfect. It's a great cake. And I think it works, the chocolate and the coffee together. It's perfectly balanced. It's not one's not overwhelming another. And the biscotti element also adds another texture to the cake, which I think is exceptional. Beautiful job. Well, let's try the next one. Very clever to bring in the Italian flag again. I love the moistness of the cake. The apricot could use a little more punch. Okay. I think you've done a very, very good cake, if a little bit busy. Thank you. Amanda, final showstopper up to the judging table. I think what you've brought us today is very charming. You've done a very good job design-wise. It's very good. I mean, it's exceptional with the little chocolate work on the outside. OK, so the top one has got the... Vanilla sponge with the chocolate ganache and the honeycomb crunch. The tempering of your chocolate is spot on. You have beautiful... The flavour is great. And actually, your, the, the vanilla sponge is delicious. But you're not getting the honeycomb. It's basically dissolved. I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, now you're talking. It's bursting. It's bursting with cherries. It's a party of cherries and chocolate. I love that. I think the textures are very good as well. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And now our judges will discuss your final showstoppers so that we can crown the champion. Each of the bakers here really brought the best of what they could do. I don't think they could have done any better, any one of them. From Tina, bringing incredible flavors and interesting combinations. She managed to get the crunch in there from the biscotti, and the sponges were delicious too. And Andrea's elegant Monet-like cake. The artistic flair was spectacular, and that blend of the filling with the buttercream icing was phenomenal. Did you like the snickerdoodle? I did. I know what they are now. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least is Amanda. Look beautiful. Love the little mushrooms. Fun and festive, and at the same time, it's very chic in a way. As a cake, it was incredible. Beautiful flavors. So which one is your favorite? Sure. Oh, we're not, we're not going to get anything. Mum's the word. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Dashing through the snow in a wonderful open sleigh. Oh, that feels me go, laughing all the way. The sun got set, and the king's favorite spots. What fun is it to rain tonight? Amanda's dedicated so much of her life to being a good role model for our kids. No matter what happens, I think the kids see their mom is doing what she loves, which is really beautiful. It's been a pretty neck and neck race, but I've had a few tastes of a couple of the cakes and I'm really rooting for Andrea tonight. It means so much for my mom to be here in the finale today. She's prepared her whole life for this. Fingers crossed for my mom. Hopefully she has what it takes, but she's my winner regardless. All right, everyone. It is the moment of truth. Ladies. Thank you so much for sharing your passion of baking. What touches me most is how you're inspiring bakers everywhere, as your skills and your confidence are prone. I've judged quite a few baking competitions over the years, and actually watching you three get better and better and better, that's what it's all about. You should all be very proud of yourselves. All right, all right. Enough of the sweet stuff. <laughs> the winner of the Great American Baking Show is Tina. <laughs> oh my God, this journey has been up and down and all over the place and I can't believe that I did it. I actually did it. Congratulations.
Congratulations! You deserve it, Tina. Well done. To the very beginning and got better and better and better. She's got such a talent. Hope she carries on teaching the next generation how to bake. I'll buy a book. She needs to do a book. <laughs> well done. Tina can bake like nobody's business. She puts passion into everything she bakes. And it's been a thrill to watch Tina challenge herself and push boundaries. That's what baking's all about. You did it! Holiday edition! <laughs> Tina, I'm just so happy. I'm so deserved. And you know what? This is an over-the-moon experience of a lifetime that I will never forget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Baking has been so important in my life because it's connected me with my past and having my family here to help me celebrate the completion of this journey is such a prize. Thanks guys. Believing hard, you can you can do anything. You you can do anything. Even at 56, you can do it. <laughs>